Now I'd like to show you step-by-step step some of the techniques and tools that I used within Adobe Photoshop in order to create this concept. Hello everyone. Uh, before we get started, the usual promotional material here. If you'd like to buy the course, it is available on Gumroad. and You can just click the yellow Gumroad button that pops up on the screen. And it's also available on Steam if you'd like to purchase it from there. And if you need to be able to find the links to that within the YouTube chapter, just come in here. Um, where the actual video is, click on show more and you can see the different links to Gumroad and Steam here. Um, that's about it, let's get going. So let's say that you want to go through and start picking out some new uh, pendant designs. Um, I'm going to show you how using this magic wand tool is very useful for finding internet reference and then cropping things out really quickly if you find a cool design. So what I've done here is in Google I've entered the Norwegian name or the Norse name for Thor's hammer. I'm not even going to try to pronounce this. Um, so, <laughs> uh, anyways, I put that in there and then under search tools I've chosen large. I always do that first to see if I can find high resolution images. I just look through here, see if I can find something cool. I think this looks pretty cool. Although I've chosen ancient, this might be a replica of an ancient design. But it's really cool, so if it just so happens the artist that created this is watching this, props to you, this is a really nice image. So I'm just going to copy this and put it in my scene. And uh, you can see that there's a little bit of uh, white transition to blue here. If this is pure white, it'd be super easy to use the wand tool. By default, it's set to 32 in here. If you click this, you can see that it's not quite getting through everything I need to do. Um, tolerance, if you turn this thing down to 1, it's literally just going to pick whatever the most close color to it is. So just pure white, that's what you're seeing only selecting something like this. But let's switch it up to like maybe say 100. And now it starts cutting in very closely. It's almost perfect on the top. And then down here you see where it gets a little bit darker. It's still not quite getting in. So let's switch this up to about 120 tolerance. Click on this again. And now this is almost perfect you know it's it's a concept image so I don't care if it's bleeding a little bit here and I just do control X to cut that out and let's transform that down a bit so we can make it fit about the size I think would be on this necklace here that actually looks really cool um, let's hide our other hammer pendant and if you zoom out here now you can see how that looks that's pretty freaking cool but anyways, um, I'm probably not going to use that one, but either way you get an idea of how the magic wand tool you, uh, use can work for you. Really fun, super simple to use, I highly recommend it when photo bashing. Alright, technique number two is I'm going to show you how to take something like a black and white illustration such as the horns that Mark had, had originally here and how you can use different uh, layers in the layer channel to get different effects with colors underneath them. So just right off the bat, if you guys don't know this, there's all these different layers under here which are really awesome to use. So if you click one of these and then you just press the up and down arrow key on your keyboard, you can start going through all these. Um, and what I usually do is I just go through all these super, super fast. I mean, once you get used to it, you kind of know what each of these mean. But in the end, for me, I just like to see quick iteration. So if you go through this and just notice here, you can see it's switching through the different layers. Um, you can get some really cool effects. So like if I was going super illustrative like comic book style, maybe I'd use an overlay layer. Um, and I think originally what I ended up using was the multiply layer over top of a color that I felt was representative of the scene. So that's something I use all the time. Um, so let's say we have this normal 2D image and maybe I sketch it out. In this case we use Mark's image. And since this is a solid image, the other thing you can do too is as long as you have this selected here, hold down the control key and click on this. I showed you this earlier, but that just selects whatever is available in that layer. Now let's say we didn't have that horn color layer underneath, right? Let's say we didn't have this. So um, let's make a new layer down here just by clicking this button, that, which is also used for copying layers. You can drag this down and copy and copy. Um, and you can also drag down and delete, but this will just make a new layer. So let's make a new layer and that's where we're going to put a new color and maybe let's just call it new color in here. And um, since we have uh, this selected right now, we did the control click thing, we can then just fill this with a generic color. And normally what I'll do is let's say I want the horns to be somewhat representative of the materials in here. I go to our eyedropper, 
and I'll just click a generic color like this. Now you can notice in our color channel down here we have it. I'll go to the um, I press G to quickly get to the uh, paint bucket and then I just um, apply that in here. Let's turn off our horn illustration so we can see this. Click in here and now you can see that we have the color and I'm going to do a control D to deselect and let's go back up to our horn illustration turn this on and now again we can go down here to multiply we can either do that with of course again the up and downs if you want or you can just go in here and click on multiply so you know it's a little bit dark down here it's not exactly what I'm looking for so of course you can come in and um, mess with the adjustments brightness and contrast something like that turn it up a bit and I assume most of you guys know this but if you don't I'm just going to show you right now so let's say you want to adjust brightness and contrast to affect this permanently you can do that um, of course by going here adjustments and doing that but down here as well if you click this little button you can do that per layer the problem is is um, if we have this on here it's going to affect the entire scene so if you were just doing this on a small image um, you could have this and then anything that's below this entire and the entire stack will get affected so in this case we don't want to do that but it's just cool for you to know because that's something that you can have it's non-destructive and it's in your scene so we have this it's a little bit bright and then maybe up here right we want to do some type of blue coloration in the green let's say we're we're satisfied with this even though I'm not um, we can go in and then start adding some new stuff so let's make another layer and then again I'm going to go up here to the horn illustration and because I know that this is the the solid form of this I'm going to control click this to get this highlight area because I want to be able to paint just within these regions so now I have a new layer I'm not going to even name it at this point one thing that's really cool here with the marquee tool and this is something I didn't even know until like <laughs> I think it was like five years into my professional career if you just do control H you can hide that um, marquee selection control H again to reveal it but the thing that's great about this control H hide it again it's still selected in the scene so now if we press B and go to a paintbrush and I'm just going to go to my big bracket key and scale this up uh, let's pick a blue color to represent uh, something that feels a little bit more like steel uh, a little bit dark like this now we start painting right and since um, you know we can't paint outside this area because if I press Control H again, the marquee selection's technically on. So the cool thing about this is if you hide it, you can start painting and you don't have to worry about that that thing in your face. And I, I just love that. So now you know I can switch to my eraser by press, uh, pressing E and then erase this, and then now you know I have a cool little thing here. And since the marquee selection is still available. I'll go through and I'll just paint this over here on this side too and then uh, go back to my eraser and turn this off but um, yeah this is just a really cool way like these techniques with using a black and white image honestly any image like it's just so fun to go through here try these different things you know if you don't want to just click here one by one by one just up and down on the keyboard and you can get so many different variations Another really cool way to use the up and down arrows on your keyboard for functionality in Photoshop is if you need to use font on your image. So although I haven't had to use this on my image just yet, um, let's say you have the word Viking in here. Right now this text does not look Viking at all. So if we have the text um, or the font um, action selected and now we highlight this completely, make sure you have it highlighted and then you go up here to where you have the uh, different fonts that you can choose from make sure that you highlight this so if this is selected and fully highlighted and this is highlighted now all you got to do is press down on the uh, arrow key on your keyboard or up you can cycle through all the fonts that you have existing and this is just a really quick way to flip through and keep going until you find something that feels very viking you know like that feels really really viking so you keep something like that but um there's a couple different ways in photoshop that the up and down keys are used to quickly get through stuff so I just wanted to share that with you as well. Uh, the main focus of this next technique is to show you how to use a transform tool called the warp tool so that you can take things and kind of curve them around like you see here. Also just to let you know um, right now I have this cut in half because later I can flip things over with a flip horizontal command. 
So what I've done here is I've kind of erased our original bird feather line. So let's say you can find a good image online. I went to this tattoowallpapers.com site and found this uh, nice looking black and white image of uh, a, a raven. So I'm going to copy that and put that in my scene. And you can see we have him. He's looking good. Uh, I'm just going to cut out the areas that I don't need right off the bat. And the, you know, if I wanted to, I could start using just the multiply tool uh, since this is pure black and white. And we might as well do that because it looks pretty good. I'm just going to cut off a little bit more of this before we get started. The other thing too I'm going to do is uh, remove some of the areas I don't think I'm going to need as I'm uh, designing this. I usually don't worry about getting this super specific whenever I'm kind of just working out the design elements. Again, I'm going to trim this as close as I can so that if I was to press control T that it only affects this one area. I wouldn't want something that has lingering data off to the side. Uh, another thing I'm going to do really quick just to help me visualize things is I'm going to flood a background with kind of a, a dark gray so that we can more easily see our image here. And now we have our wing that we're going to switch back into a multiply mode. And then I'm just going to try and kind of position this like we were seeing our um, feathers a little bit earlier. So if you press Control T and then now you right click, go down here to warp. And you can see in here, you can start moving things around and start curving them and shaping them the way that you want. So it, it can take a little while to get this going exactly how you like, but if you're patient, you can get this thing lined up pretty nicely. And right here, I'm just speeding up this portion of the recording. Yeah, so I feel that that's pretty good. I mean, what I did in the final piece, whenever you saw this one, is I went through and I really finessed things. I cut more space and I actually recreated each of these by hand. But this gave me a really good basic outline of where I wanted to go. And whenever I was happy with all that, what I normally do is I'll just kind of collapse that design down. I always try to think about working and mirroring. So I'm going to go to the move key here, pressing V, and then I'm going to do Alt-Shift to copy this out, which is a nice command, so just Alt-Shift and then drag. And then underneath the Edit Modifier, Transform, I'm going to do Flip Horizontal. You can't see it, it's off the screen here just a little bit, but you say Flip Horizontal. And then uh, we can just put that back in here. Uh, if you wanted to get a nice snap, you know, we could turn on the um, Snap tool and then that would, should connect right in there. And then we have our uh, mirrored piece here. And that's the basics of using the warp tool. I'll use that quite a bit. There's another tool, I think, in the filter section called Liquify. Uh, you can check that out as well. It does some pretty cool things. The final Photoshop technique I want to show you guys is how to use this pin tool here, as well as the convert point tool, and also the direct selection tool, and how those three tools can allow you to create some beautiful curves like you see here on this axe blade from a authentic replica of a Mammon axe from the 10th and 9th century Viking horde invasions of England. Um, <laughs> I, as you can tell, I get a little carried away whenever I work on an art piece or things like this. I research everything. Not only am I finding reference images, I get on Wikipedia, I read books, I, I try and get as evolved as much as possible to try and make things accurate or figure out how things are made, you know, whether they use steel or iron or all these kind of things. So if you search online, Mammen Axe, M-A-M-M-E-N, you'll find this uh, type of axe. And the thing that's really cool about this too is um, right here, this is about the size of a fist, so not only could you use it for battle, but if you held it like a fist, you could use it for carving things, stuff like that. Sorry, I'm geeking out. I, I just, I love that kind of thing. Like, knowing more about the functionality of anything that you create from an artistic design 
or you know mechanical design anything like if you know how it works it's just going to it's going to read properly you know when you see human characters things like that in the uncanny valley it's the same thing with props and all that if you know these different things and how stuff at, was actually created it's going to make what you develop even more believable and also for you you're going to learn something so i recommend just research the hell out of stuff so let's go ahead and jump in here grab the pen tool and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop a couple anchors on here and if you guys want to follow along with this I just recommend you print screen this and then go to Photoshop and follow along so just click here and then let's click here on this corner point um, we'll click down here at the bottom here again up here at the top and then finally we'll close it. See how the pen tool turns to a circle and the moment it does that you know that it's going to complete the pass selection so you can't really tell what's going on, we just have angles. Um, so now is where we want to switch to the convert point tool. So now like a marquee selection, you just drag all around this and you can see that our points are actually highlighted down here. So as long as you're in this tool, uh, it, it kind of serves like an anchor. So you see when you go over top of the dot here, um, hope you can see that uh, it turns to that design. So now you just click this and drag out and now you can affect the lines of the design. So what I want to do is make this feel sharp and then curved on this side and then I'll click this one next and I want to get a nice curve down here and I'm going to click this come back to this top one I'm not going to make this perfect since I'm just demonstrating this right now. This one I'm going to match along the left side of the cutting edge of the cutting edge of the blade. Let's select this top portion. And we need to adjust this just a bit here. Cool. So it's hard to tell, but we do have this selected. Now, if you ever made a mistake or things like that, or you really wanted to move something, that's where this direct selection tool comes in pretty handy. You could come down and just drag and click one of these and you can move it anywhere you want in the scene. You can't do that with the anchor tool or the pen tool. So um, something useful to use if you ever need to drag on here. You can also affect the pivot points of this, but the problem with this tool is it only works, well, no, I mean, it works kind of like the anchor tool, so you can do the same thing. So anyways, let's say you're you're happy with the curves that you have here. Make sure you have an empty layer. Um, I did that by clicking this. Now, up here, this is the important part on paths. If you look in here, it's hard to tell, you can't tell, but it says work path. This is, um, this is our work path right here. So if you hold down control on your keyboard, and then you click this, now you can see that the selection is active. So what I like to do is I come back here to the layer, and then uh, I'll, I'll pick a color. One thing that's really cool too, if you guys see this icon down here, this will go to pure black and white. So when you're working with masks, which is what we're about to do, you can click this, revert really quickly back to your color. The other thing you can do too that you guys might not know, if you press X on the keyboard, it switches between these two different colors. So now we've got black. Um, let's go ahead and fill that. So I'm gonna press G to get back to my gradient tool or the paint bucket. And then now we just fill that. I'm going to press Control D to deselect this. So now we have a really nice um, curve on here, and I'm going to turn off my layer on the bottom. So, you know, if you just need to kind of evaluate this, this lets you see really quickly and solidly what the form should be. And it'd be impossible to get something as clean as this with a lasso tool. So I, I use this pen and anchor tool all the time. The other thing I like to do in here is now that we have this, if you want to make like a, a quick thin line between this. Let's just make a duplicate of this layer and the reason I'm doing that is in case I make a mistake. Um, click on here so now let's say we want to make the outline of this. Remember we control click again like we did the pass thing but now imagine that this is our pass so we have this selected. Let's come up here to select and go modify contract and my scene's really big so I need to have a ton of pixels. I'm going to say contract by 15 um, now let's come on the inside here. Let's do Control X to cut that out. And now we have a nice uh, borderline that comes just right here in the center. So 
you know, that's something that's uh, really useful. And this is basically the technique. Well, not basically, this is the technique that I use to create not only this, like each of these lines in here, I use that same thing that you just saw right now. And for each of these two, um, I use the same thing. I, I quickly went through here, I would draw out a design, do something like this, ah, that doesn't work, draw out another. And just like on pen and paper or things like that, you know, it'd be really hard to, not really hard, it just wouldn't be as accurate. So that's a, a super, super useful technique that allows you to get really clean curves um, and yeah, that, that's about it. I think that covers most of the stuff that I was using with the photo bashing technique. So after that, I've got a pretty solid concept and I think I can move on and start doing 3D again. So I will say goodbye.